So from this lecture onwards, let's explore about the Linux kernel modules and let's write a simple hello world kernel module. First, let's learn how to write a simple hello world kernel module. We'll learn how to compile the kernel module using the kernel build mechanism and uh, transferring kernel module to the BeagleBone Black hardware, loading it and unloading it. Let's get started. First, let's start with understanding what exactly is Linux kernel module. Linux supports dynamic insertion and removal of code from the kernel while the system is up and running. The code what we add and remove at runtime is called a kernel module. Once the Linux kernel module is loaded into the Linux kernel, you can start using new features and functionalities exposed by the kernel module without even restarting the device. Linux kernel module dynamically extends the functionality of the kernel by introducing new features to the kernel such as security, device drivers, the file system drivers, system calls and various other things. Basically it's a kind of modular approach. You have a base kernel and if you want to add new features then you can add as a module to the running kernel. Support for Linux kernel module allows your embedded Linux systems to have only minimal base kernel image and optional device drivers and other features are supplied on demand via module insertion. Example when a hot pluggable new device such as USB is inserted, the device driver which is Linux kernel module gets loaded automatically to the kernel. That's why the code what we add and remove at runtime is called as a kernel module. Device driver is an example of Linux kernel module. So basically what I can say is a Linux kernel module is like a plugin to the running Linux kernel. There are two main uh, types of LKMs, static and dynamic. Let's understand what exactly is a static LKM. When you build a Linux kernel, you can make your module statically linked to the kernel image. That means module becomes part of the final Linux kernel image. This method increases the size of the final Linux kernel image. Since the module is built in into the Linux kernel image, you can't unload the module. It occupies the memory permanently during the runtime. And the second one is dynamic Linux kernel module. When you build a Linux kernel, these modules are not built into the final kernel image and rather they are compiled and linked separately to produce .ko files. We actually did this in the previous lecture. We executed a command modules. That command actually built the kernel modules, the dynamic kernel modules separately. That command actually produced lots of .ko files. You can dynamically load and unload these modules from the kernel using a user space program such as insmod or modprobe or rmmod. These are the commands which we will be using in future lectures too insert and remove the kernel module, the dynamic kernel modules. So in summary, when you are building the kernel, you can either link modules directly into the kernel or build them as separate modules that can be loaded into the kernel at some other time. In this lecture, let's write our very first kernel module. Here is an example of a kernel module, a hello world kernel module. It looks like a normal user space uh, C program. But we have to understand a lot of things here. So because we write kernel module according to uh, some rules because the kernel module is going to run in the kernel space. Let's understand this program step by step. Here we can divide this program into a couple of sections. There is a header section, there is your code section, and uh, there is a registration section and there is a module description section. 
basically these sections are part of a kernel module let's go through these sections one by one first of all let's explore the header section here you have to mention the appropriate kernel headers for your kernel module you can find all the kernel headers uh, in kernel source tree in the path include linux that's a place where all the kernel headers are placed in that location you find a kernel header called module.h every kernel module should include this header file because it has got a definition of various uh, macros which you are going to use uh, while writing a kernel module let's explore about what is the difference between kernel header versus user space header for example what you just saw here is a kernel header so an example for a user level a header may be stdio.h that's a header file what you find in the standard c library that's a user level header this is a kernel header since you write a kernel module that is going to be executed in kernel space you should be using kernel headers never include any user space library headers like c standard library header files no user space library is linked to the kernel module during a kernel build procedure. For example, you don't link your kernel module code with a C standard library. You don't do that. That's the reason you should not use any uh, user space headers while writing the kernel module. Most of the relevant kernel headers are placed in the Linux source tree at the path include Linux let's move forward now let's explore about the code section here your code is nothing but collection of couple of functions this is a normal c function but it looks weird because it has got some kernel related syntaxes that is very easy to understand i will explain that but it does look like a normal c function basically while writing a kernel module we use two entry points here the first function is called as module initialization entry point or in short i call it as module initialization function and the second function is called as module cleanup entry point or in short i call it as module cleanup function initialization function and a cleanup function you don't see a main function here so there is no main function we talk about entry points this function is a initialization entry point and this is a cleanup entry point inside the function you can write any code for example here i am using some uh, kernel printing services or printing apis to print some data so we'll explore about kernels print up later let's move forward let's understand more about module initialization function why it is required first of all this is a prototype of a module initialization function it should return int and function name you can give anything you want your custom name and it will not be taking any parameters so input parameters are void the module initialization function must return a value zero for success non zero means module initialization failed so the module will not get loaded into the kernel this is an entry point to your module like main we talk in terms of entry points this function will get called during boot time in the case of static modules in the case of dynamic modules this function will get called during module insertion that should be one module initialization entry point in the module for example if you compile this kernel module as a dynamic module then this function will get called when you insert the module into the kernel using user level programs such as insmod let's move forward let's explore more about module initialization function what you do here you do some initialization of devices initialization of device private data structures you request some memory dynamically for various kernel data structures and services 
you request for allocation of major and minor numbers, the device file creation, various things you do in this function. So all these things we are going to understand when we write a character driver in the upcoming lectures. Basically, you do initialization related things in this function because it's the entry point. It's like a main. Let's understand the complete syntax of this function. You have got static keyword there and you have got underscore underscore init tag there. So what are those? We have to understand that. The module initialization function is module specific and should never be called from other modules of the kernel. Because it's an initialization function of a module, so why would other modules will call it? It is module specific. It should not provide any services or functionalities which may be requested by other modules. You should not give any services here which may be required from other modules. Hence, it makes sense to make this function private using static, though it is optional. Here, static keyword is actually optional, but as I said, this is module specific and it is private to modules. Then it's good if you make this function a static function like private to a file or private to a kernel module. That's the reason why we use static here, but it is optional. Let's move forward. I'll come to that init tag later. That is underscore underscore init tag or a macro. So I'll come to that later. Let's understand module cleanup function. This is a prototype of module cleanup function. Return type is void. Function name can be anything your wish you can give any name here and uh, it doesn't take any input parameters this is also an entry point when module is removed since you cannot remove static modules cleanup function will get called only in the case of dynamic modules when it is removed using user space command such as rm mod if you write a module and you are sure that it will always be statically linked with the kernel, then there is no need to implement this function. Even if your static module has a cleanup function, the kernel build system will remove it during the build process if there is an underscore underscore exit marker or tag. What you do inside the cleanup function? Typically, you must do exact reverse operation what you had done in the module init function. Cleanup does undoing what init function has done. You free some memories uh, which are requested in init function. You can also deinit some devices or leave the device in proper state. That's the job of cleanup function. Again, when we write some drivers, you will understand how to use this function. Basically, what you should remember here is for static modules, cleanup functions are not required if you are very much sure that it will always be linked statically to the Linux kernel. And if a module is dynamically loadable module, then a cleanup function gets called whenever the module is removed by using user level programs such as rmod. In the next lecture, let's understand what exactly are these macros that is for init and for exit. We'll understand whether it is really required or what's the advantage of having these macros or markers. I'll see you in the next lecture.